gentlemen, you're watching Life Walk, Dream It, Live It, your favorite TV show. And I'm your host, Tanyara Dwama Ziripi. With me right here in the building, I have a very spectacular, popular celebrity in Zimbabwe, or even outside Zimbabwe, Mr. Mono Mukundu. He has worked with over 500 uh, music artists and produced over a thousand music albums. And I'll give him a little time to introduce himself. Welcome, sir, to the show. Uh, thank you, Tanya, and uh, thank you for having me. Um, Clive Mono Mukundu um, was born Clive Mukundu. Uh, the name Mono came about as a nickname because I used to have a single dreadlock. Ah. When I, was, <laughs> when I was still in school. So um, I was born Clive Mukundu, uh, 15 September 1970. It was, it was a Tuesday. And um, I grew up in the high density suburbs of Kambuzuma, Mfakos and Kwazana here in Harare. And I started uh, playing music at a young age, around age nine. That's when I started playing a uh, one teen guitar. Right. Then uh, professionally, I started playing guitar in um, 1988. That's when I entered the music uh, industry on a professional level. So this year I'm celebrating 29 years in the industry. Wow, wow, so, that's wonderful. Basically, that's a, that's a short introduction of myself. Mm, wonderful. I had to say that you started by playing a homemade guitar. Yeah, <laughs> yeah because uh, my parents were very much against me getting into the music industry, so there was no way they were going to pay for, well, to buy a guitar for me. So I had to make do with a you know, homemade one. So I took myself out to make a, a homemade guitar. We used to take a, um, it was a gallon uh, that was used, used to contain cooking oil. And then you take a plank and then you put a plank and then you put uh, fishing lines. The fishing lines would be in strings. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> How thoughtful. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen out there, you have tried to start your own thing, but you have felt. But Mr. Mono Mukundu here has started by playing a homemade guitar, but you all have to give up. After what it has you must be serious. Uh, Mr. Mono Mukundu, uh, can you tell us a brief background uh, in your mu of your musical life? Um, I, like I said, I started uh, professionally in 1988. Uh, what happened is uh, on 22 January 1988 is the day I was taught my first uh, chords on a proper guitar. So that same year, 1988, I started my first group, um, it's called uh, Sangano Chanters. Okay. Um, with three school boys, I was still 17 at the time, still in school. Um, the band was called Sangano Chanters. And um, those days, um, for you to record, you had to go for live auditions in front of our music producers, and there was only one studio in the country. Yeah. And uh, we did more than 10 auditions, and we failed all of them. Um, it was because we were not, uh, we were still learning, so we just used it, it as a learning curve and uh, moved on. So after those 10 auditions, after we tried a lot of things, after a lot of discouragements, we tried to do live shows, and I remember a number of times we chased off stage, and um, so there was no support, nothing to encourage us, we found it uh, at home. The parents were saying, uh, do something better, look for a proper job. And uh, when you go to the studios, the studios are uh, saying you're not good enough, you try to go for a gig, and the crowd says you're not good enough. So um, after about a year, all the members in the band, they got discouraged and um, that's how the band split up. So 1989, I joined another band, uh, I remember it was called Chuck's Brothers, uh, with the likes of uh, Admaika Sengard, uh, Jackson Peary, and uh, some other guys. We tried again to record a number of times, we failed the auditions, uh, we did a number of shows and uh, most of the shows were flops because uh, you know, it's difficult to do a show when you don't have uh, music which is known. Mm -hmm. So most of the shows were flops and um, we ended up uh, weighing hungry for, for some days. I remember one time we were eating um, fried maize, uh, maputi for breakfast, lunch and supper. So. Um, I remember I had a friend of mine in the band uh, named Stuart Kufa. We just decided, you know what, I, we don't think this is going anywhere because um, we are failing to record and um, 
you can't do shows when you don't have uh, music which is on rotation on, on radio most people don't know you so we decided to quit the band and I went back home we were staying in Newton at that time that was 1991 yeah then uh, Sometime around May, June 1991, a guy introduced himself as somebody who has a music contract at a hotel in Utari. So he wanted to form a band, a new band. He called it the Crocodile Rockers Game. So I agreed to join because he had um, given very flashy promises. He was saying, you believe me at a hotel in Utari, uh -huh. staying at the hotel, getting paid, Bobo. Uh, so I recruited a friend of mine from my first band from some kind of chanters and then he came with uh, other band members. We went to Mutari only to realize there was no hotel we was talking about and we had to audition for for places to play. <laughs> <laughs> so it was tough again, we had to struggle and, you know, to cut the long story short, we ended up um, staying at a place in Penalonga, a place called Ching for three months, we moved from Ching and then we go to another place at another hotel in Mutari, it was called Nyaman in the hotel. We stayed there for a year and then problems started when they started um, they started by paying us part of the payment. Because generally in the first place the pay was very little. It was very little. We couldn't afford to rent individually. So we all six of us were to rent one room and all six of us were living in one room. Don't sleep sleeping there, don't sleep sleeping there, don't sleep sleep sleeping there with no furniture, just a primer stove <laughs> and a bag of millimeter in the corner and um, that was that thing. With that little money they started uh, cutting the salary again for no reason. And then things started going bad again uh, with no clothes, uh, with tattered clothes, tattered shoes. So to get our money we had to confiscate the instruments by giving our water, by giving our if you don't give us our money back. That's how we left the, the hotel, but the good thing is that uh, they ended up giving us our, the money that they owed us, and then we came back to Harare. When we came back to Harare, that's when we fought hard to, to be recorded. We recorded an album that was released in 1992, but unfortunately again, as soon as the album was released, there were some squabbles in the band, and the band split soon after the release of the album. So from there, I started working as a session musician for different bands until 20th June 1994, when I joined the J Gospel Train and became a Christian. And then I started working for gospel music bands. I worked for worked for a J Gospel Train, my little brother, Celebration Choir, um, Elias Musawa Choir, Fungisai. At that time, there were very few musicians in the music and the gospel music industry. So I was like one of the very few guitarists. I think there were about three guitarists for the whole of the country. So I was playing for everybody. Then um, the, I stopped. Uh, that time I was working full time for churches. I was working for Zaija, then went to Field Church, and then another church called uh, Revival um, Ministries. And then year 2000, I stopped working for churches, went to College of Music. Uh, 2001, 2002, 2003, I joined the Olivia Left Olivia Mutubuzi, 2007. And then I started my own studio. So this is where I am right now. Wow. Yeah. That was really a tough road. <laughs> I would mean, just say, my Lara, you know, one room, yeah, all of you. Only six of us. Ladies and gentlemen out there, you have recorded one track, and my fans, and you decided to give up. But Mr. Mono Mukundi did a lot of things trying to make sure that he gets to his dream, and he eventually got there. Uh, Mr. Mono, uh, can you tell us uh, who you have worked with in terms of uh, artists? If you worked with only gospel musicians, or you've also, you also worked with people who sing secular music? Um, I've worked with um, all genres and all styles of music. Those are, um, uh, I started off in secular music, but with small bands. Right. And then I became a Christian in 1994 and started working with um, gospel musicians. And then 
I was also working with um, other genres as well. I worked with someone in the way I worked with one who was for four years, traveled around the world. Um, I worked with um, transit crew, rumba bands. So I was, uh, I, I also toured with Chiwaniso in 2007, 2008. So I worked with a lot of people, even in South Africa. I recently recorded, um, uh, as part, I mean, I put guitars on a, uh, what is the name of the band? Mango Group. This is South African band. I also recorded uh, with uh, Lufuno Dagada. He's, um, he's part of a. Um, he was part of a. What is this? I mean, they call it uh, Worship House. Oh. Yeah, he was part of Worship House. Mm -hmm. So I'm always working with uh, different people from different. You know how it is with modern technology. You can work with some, somebody in the UK, mm -hmm. in France, while she's in Zimbabwe. So I'm always working with uh, different artists. So, uh, uh, what inspired you to keep going? Like, uh, I heard you say that you faced so many challenges along the way. Uh, and some of the people uh, got off the train. They left the, the wagon. And mm -hmm. But you kept on going. What pushed you? What inspired you? Uh, that question is very difficult to answer. Because even myself, I also asked myself the question. Was, um, when everybody around me was quitting, it's like I was um, getting more in, um, more energy. Because okay. um, I remember I used to write down um, what you call journals every night. I would write down what transpired through the day. That's why up to now I still have all my dates and everything because I used to write down every day. So when everybody was busy quitting, I was busy writing down the stuff because I was telling myself I'm going to need this information when I make it someday maybe write a book or something. So I was busy writing down all the dates, all the all the discouragements, all the auditions, all the all the times we were chased off stage, everything I was writing it down. So I think the one thing that also helped me was uh, before I entered the music industry full time, I done a small research. I read a few biographies of um, uh, musicians that made it. I noticed that worldwide um, it's, al it's always not easy to, to break through into the music industry. I remember I read um, uh, Bob Marley's history because um, I grew up being a very big Bob Marley fan. I noticed how he tried this, tried that, and then he kept failing and then until he made it. So I knew that uh, the industry that I'm entering is not that easy. So I sort of prepared for the for the struggles because I dreamed about it. So when I started the four minutes over from town to the point and uh, sleeping hungry, I knew it was going to come. So I was not uh, that's why I was not discouraged like uh, other people. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, I heard you say that you you read about Bob Marley. Is he the only one who in terms of music, is he the only one who inspired you or oh, there's some other artists out there that inspired you to keep going? Um, I was inspired by a number of artists. Uh, Bob Marley inspired me a lot as a composer. Because oh. I like the way he composes his music and I'm also a reggae fan. Right. And um, I like his stage work, uh, his philosophy. Although religion-wise, well, we don't, I don't agree with his religion. I don't have the same beliefs with him. But uh, his philosophy, his songwriting, and everything it inspired me, and then on the guitar side, uh, locally I was inspired by Jonas Tolle. He used to play for Thomas Mufumo, Jonas Tolle and Piggy Chiang. And then international, I was inspired a lot by Jimi Hendrix. Then as a producer, I was inspired by a number of people. Locally, I was inspired by Fortune Parusa and Andrew Bade. International, I was inspired by people like um, Quincy Jones. So the number of uh, sides of mono, so each side is got its own um, inspiration. Mm, wonderful. Mm. Uh, I heard you, uh, when you, when you talked about your background, you say that uh, you went for auditions to record music, to mm. sing and music. Yeah. But now, you are, are you mainly a producer or you, or you also do your own songs? Well, I do my own music as well. I've got nine albums up to, wow. um, to date. Yeah. I do my own music and um, I've done a number of uh, videos. But you know how, how it happens at times, um, 
producers usually they don't become as famous as the people they produce. Because <laughs> 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 I produce for Alex Okawara, Japres, uh, Solomon Jibe, to all those people. What I do for them gets very big and what I do for myself doesn't get that big. <laughs> so it's an uh, effect of life, it happens. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm still here with Mr. Mona Mukundi and we are going for a break. Catch you right after the break.